This is Bill Doyle on Vermont Issues, and two special guests is Juan de Bril, who's won a recent award, and we'll be talking about volunteers, and uh, uh, Sophie Kirsten, who's known for the penetrating questions that, that, that she has. <laughs> and, uh, so, and let's let's start off with, with Wanda and uh, talk about the why, why did you what this award that you received talk about the award that you received? Well, <coughs> I got a call. <coughs> excuse me, one night, and um, this voice on the phone said, um, you know, I'm so-and-so, and I have some news for you. And I said, oh, really? Because I thought it might be um, somebody who's wanting to sell me something. Right. You know, that's usually the call you get. But you're so gracious when people See, ask. Yes. <laughs> you, you, treat, so, you treat people so well. I said, well, what is it? And uh, this voice said, well, I'm here to tell you that you've been awarded uh, the Citizen of the Year by the Montpelier Rotary Club. And I said, you're kidding. And he said, no, I'm not kidding. I said, are you sure you're not kidding? <laughs> I said, I don't even belong to Rotary. So I don't know why I won an award. You're a citizen of Montpelier and very well known, but go ahead. <laughs> so, so he talked to me about it. And uh, he said, well, we'll get back to you later. But he said, we will be having a lunch for you at the hotel. And I'll tell you more about that later on. I said, okay. So I hung up the phone and I'm sitting there going, did I really hear this? Is this real? Or is somebody picking on me? And so I went to sleep. And the next day I came to work and I didn't say anything to anybody because I'm thinking, well, maybe this isn't a real thing. So um, about five days later, I said to my, my manager, and I work at United Way, um, that this had happened. And she said, really? Oh, that's exciting. And I said, do you think it's real? And she said, yeah, I think it's real. So then I got some more phone calls about, OK, you need to be down at the hotel. And this is Which a hotel, date. What hotel are you talking about? Uh, the one in Montpelier. Fred Bouchard's hotel. Yeah, Fred Bouchard's uh, hotel. And um, so I went. And here were all of these people that I had never, I've seen, but it's been years since I saw some of them. Some of them are, were just high school boys when I knew them. And here they are all grown up. So I'm going around talking to everybody. And they had a wonderful lunch. Mm. Uh, my daughter was invited and she came, which, I didn't know whether she was coming or not. <laughs> and um, so it was just a fine, fine affair. And they presented me with a plaque and um, the uh, reasons why I was chosen. Let's go into those reasons. Um, the plaque is still being worked on, so I don't have it with me. But it was all the different things that they had gotten information from about things I had done in the community. I'll and talk I, about uh, I'll, I'll talk about them okay. a little bit later. And, uh, any questions at this stage, Sophie? Well, I'm, I'm right with you. I want to know what the plaque says. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and it's, it's a big plaque, you know, like this. And the fellow has got it framing it, is what he's doing. Uh -huh. So, um, one, I, I can tell you that yeah, I'm very active in the Red Cross. Okay. And um, I 
am on the disaster action team, which means that if my phone rings at one o'clock in the morning and somebody says, we need you, there's a fire, how quick can you get here? And usually there's at least two of us from the Red Cross that go together because they don't like one person going on its own. So that could last for maybe four or five hours. You're working with the firefighters, you're you know, doing what they want you to do, like can you help somebody out of the house? Somebody's in the ambulance and their blood pressure is going down. We might need you um, later to sit with them or something. So, um, and you have to be trained. You can't just go do it. So I had been trained to set up a shelter if we need it. Remember when we had the hurricane sure. and everything Irene, got flooded? Yeah. That, we needed a lot of help. Well, I opened a shelter at the Berlin Elementary School because that can that. be used as a shelter. Yep. And there's a lot of things you have to do to do that. You can't just open the door and say, come on in. You have to take information, you have to fill out forms, you have to make sure that nobody's sick, that everybody's okay. And I didn't know for sure exactly how long they would be there. Yeah, that was a big question. And you have to uh, feed them. Mm. And so there's a lot of things involved in something like this, to do this. And our Red Cross members uh, basically are, are in the Washington County area. We do go outside that area if they need us, but the Red Cross folks down in the southern part of Vermont and also in Burlington will tell us those things so we can figure out where we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to do. Then I'm also on the, the Town of Berlin Emergency Management Team, which oh. is a different team. We meet once a month, and we talk about things that, in Berlin, are we ready for an emergency? Uh, do we know what the fire department is doing? Hopefully, um, their new chief is going to be meeting with us every month, which will um, be good for communication. But, but you never know when these things come along. Mm. So I've learned a lot that way. And then um, we've just started a new program in Central Vermont, which has to do with rescuing animals. And we're just beginning to get that started. So it's um, interesting, but we haven't learned everything we need to. We have to take tests that the state has. And if we don't pass the test, then we have to take it again. <laughs> so it's a, it's a complex, but a very rewarding kind of volunteerism which I never thought about. When I first started in doing volunteer work, um, I was working at National Life, and I think my boss said, one, if they need somebody to go down to the state and be on a board, which is true. And I said, well, why me? And he said, because I think you'd be good. So off I went. And uh, it was a, it was a, a board that was talking about education and what we needed to do and how we needed to do it. And I didn't know everybody on the board. I felt like I was kind of, uh, what do I say, <laughs> kind of thing. New kid on the block. Yeah. And so that's when it started. And I had probably worked at National Life for maybe, I don't know, 15 years or so when they asked me to do this. Hmm. They also asked me if I would like to um, work for United Way as a volunteer because two or three other people at National Life were doing the same thing. 
So I said, oh yeah, that might be interesting. So I went and um, got acquainted with them. And uh, there were several people on the board. And at, at some point along the way, I, they, I was asked to be on the board of directors. Oh, wow. So that was part of my learning about United Way. What do you do? How do you do it? Um, you know, I know they raise money, but I didn't really have a lot of information about it. Can you give us a small snippet, maybe, of what they do and what well, your part of it is? When I, when I, yes, when we raise money, <coughs> we go out to the general public. And we work in the three northern counties, Caledonia, Essex, and there's one other one up there in that corner, and then Washington County, and part of Orange County. So we go to a, um, a business, and we do a sales pitch, <laughs> honestly, and um, ask them if they would like to help their community by giving money. Um, so that's how it started. Basically, and then that money goes to teaching fiscal responsibility. Is that, that money goes to to um, people who need money for whatever? I mean, we don't just give it away without having it have an impact. Like it could be on children, it could be on homeless people, it could be, but it has to go to a. Um, nonprofit organization that's working with these people. Mm. We don't actually go in and work with the people unless we're asked to help right. the managers or whoever is is dealing with the people. What a wonderful resource! So it is, and I may be able to get in a little bit later to how much we've grown this past year. Or mm. Or two. So then I'm also involved what's called um, the local emergency planning committee. Ah. And we meet every other month and our job is to make sure that for instance Washington County um, is ready for any kind of an emergency that comes along. And we have to put that in writing as bylaws, mm. and we're just redoing them now. And the people that serve on that committee might be uh, your police person, uh, it might be the fire department, it might be somebody from Burlington who is doing a program up there and can help us. Um, so it, people can just come and be at the meeting and ask questions and say, here's a problem we're having in Plainfield. What do you people think? You know, the, the river runs over constantly. <laughs> right. One person died because we think she fell in the river and oh couldn't my, swim. I didn't know that. And so you get a cross-section of what towns are doing and the help they need. We do get some money from the state to help us with some of the things that we want to do. And that is just getting together, talking to each other, trying to help solve problems, and making sure that we're capable for instance, if an airplane crashes at the airport in Berlin, mm -hmm. can we get up there and help them? Uh -huh. Is the hospital ready to take them in? Yeah. So you've got a wide variety of things that go on in maybe a day oh, or huge. a month or a week. Right. You know, I could go out on calls every night of the week if those calls came in to us through the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. it just, it's just you never know. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of be ready. Like we have vests that we wear, we have pictures of ourselves and badges that we have to wear ID, in right. order 
that people know who we are and that we can be there. Yeah. A good example would have been when the, the uh, truck went off the road in Middlesex and... Caught on fire. Yes. Yep. That's where Sophie lives. I drive by that every day. <laughs> and we, we were called out at about midnight to go and, and help. Now, help in this case was not to try to get them out of the vehicle, but to serve hot coffee, something to eat for the people that were working there. Mm. So again, that's a whole different type of thing that Support. we do, exactly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some of our people go to the hospital to be with the family mm. to say, we'll be here for you. Right. Is there anything we can do for you? So that's another realm that we look at. Um, but this local emergency planning group is the one that meets every other, um, every other month. And we try to figure out, are we capable, if a plane crashes at the airport, of helping, and do we know enough to do that? So it's, it's constantly doing things and learning. We, the state brings in people from out of the state to do a day seminar for us, let's say. Mm. And this one that I went to happened to be, how do you know what to do if a train goes off the track? Mm. And... That just happened in Canada, big, big one. Right. And, and so how, how do you handle that? It was like the one a little bit over in, in um, Northfield oh. that slipped off the track uh, maybe a couple of years ago. I or last that. year, yeah. yeah. Like, okay, how do we know where the fire is going to go if there is a fire based on the wind? And mm. they'll teach you how to tell which way the wind is blowing. Mm. But you start at 8 and you end at 5.30. And by that time, you're, you've got books and manuals <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. Dripping so you're, with you're information. you're going back to school, basically, <laughs> as a volunteer. Well, Sophie and I congratulate you for your volunteerism, <laughs> uh, truly. And, and why is volunteerism so important in, in our society? Well, uh, right now, the... Um, United Way is working up in the Northeast Kingdom. And we're finding that it's so important because we're volunteering up there. I mean, I am. I, I don't work up there. But if somebody came that was a volunteer, they could go up there and, and help people to pay their bills, mm -hmm. to do things. Some of these people don't, don't know how to set up a budget. Yep. They'll come to us and say, I don't know how to pay my bills, yep. literally. So that's one thing that United Way does with its volunteers. Mm -hmm. Now, two weeks ago, we had volunteers from one of the local businesses, and our staff went up to a place here in Montpelier and took their garden all apart, weeded it, resent all the plants, and it's a, a, an organization, a nonprofit, who keep people that need help, you know, because they're by themselves or, or something like that. And they sat on the, the porch and watched us do all this work in the garden. So they that's another thing that so we grateful. do as volunteers. Mm. And the company that sent their volunteers was paying them like they were working right there in the company, but they were helping these people to know that they don't have to look at weeds now. Right. They can look at flowers, and, and it's very, very nice. So, you, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, uh, that volunteerism that you talk about, it's an impact on my life also because uh, when I was 16 and, and the World War was in progress, mm -hmm. uh, the, the shortage of men and women, mm -hmm. and so the, the fire department asked me if I would be a, and others my age, if I would be a volunteer fireman. So, ah. so 
so that, that that's how it in fact got me started in my life and <clears throat> and with it meant many other advantages yeah well continue your story we um that, that brings up a good point is that we still do have volunteer firefighters and we do have volunteer police who are in training maybe to do something so that still exists it, it just doesn't get maybe talked about as much so the united way is is building on that and and encouraging people like the gardening we did mm. to do things in the community as volunteers yeah. and it's beginning to catch on and spread so it's a it's you a mentioned great, gardening Pardon? Did you mention garden? garden? Yeah. yeah. Well, the garden that we were weeding. Okay. And uh, so we do things like that now. Weed, over weeds, weeding is an essential part of gardening. Our source of information is so. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know something right. about that? Yeah. So anyway, uh, we're we're going to do a big project over in Northfield Falls shortly. A gardening one? No. Oh, okay. They're building a playground for oh, the kids. That's great. And that was done with the promise money that came to us from the federal government. And different places in, like Barry, uh, could apply, and they got some money. And um, several, like Northfield, applied, and they got some money and it came from the federal government, but they had to take that money and use it to better their community. Does not matter? Specifically. So yes, how, how did they, how did they better, use the money to better the community? Um, well, the, the one I'm do, we're doing in Northfield right now that I know more about is because they are gonna build the playground for the children. Okay. That's so fun. There's going to be one near the library right in Northfield, okay. in the back part. And um, I don't, I can't remember what it's going to consist of, but it's like a big, a big house built in the tree. You know, the kids can go there right. and just play. Yeah, and right. the other one is going to be in, in the falls, Northfield Falls, uh -huh. which is, you know, in a different place. So that... Uh, that's another thing that we can do. Yeah. So that's given me an opportunity to feel good about what I'm doing. It's expanded my knowledge of all of these things I've learned. And so that's why I really like to volunteer. Well, at this point, do you have any questions you'd like to ask, Sophie? Well, I just am so excited <laughs> to get to speak with you about all these things because it really, you know, following Bill around a little bit mm -hmm. in his volunteer projects yes. and meeting you guys both being citizens of the year, uh -huh. actually, for Montpelier at one point or another. Right. And the impact that his works and, you know, mm -hmm. the groups that you have worked with, the impact that they've had in central Vermont mm -hmm. are huge. Yes. And I remember like when Irene happened, there were a lot of misplaced people. Oh, yes. And there was a lot of damage that people needed help with. Mm -hmm. And without volunteers, things could have been really bad. Exactly. Really dangerous, sickness, you know, yeah. mayhem, the whole thing. And so I'm so grateful to you guys. Because, <laughs> well, it's growing too. It's, yeah. More people realize that volunteering is not being punished. Mm -hmm. It's being, oh my goodness, look at all the things we can do for our community. And the wonderful people you get to meet and work with. And exactly. And you that mentioned, part is. You mentioned the community. The yeah. community benefits from the volunteerism because they don't have the funds in many cases to do what they'd like to do. Exactly, mm. yeah, yeah. Now both Sophie and I wanna know the, where you went to high school. Oh, that's right. I, I went to Williamstown High School. Oh, she's a local, oh. Bill. And there were, <laughs> well, I grew up on a farm mm -hmm. and just down the road. So I went to, to Williamstown High School and we had 25 people in our class. Wow. That was the biggest class the school had ever had. What, what is it about now? Much more 
many more it's, than it's that. More, yeah, because they've, well, they've actually merged with uh, Northfield. Right. Oh, okay. And so. that's been part of the recent publicity. Yes. And indicate that's an, a, a major step that Williamstown made, but also uh, Williamstown has gotten a lot of publicity on the kind of program they had. Yes. And you must, you've got to be proud of what what the school has done. And what they're doing, yes, they are. And, and it's hard to change a school, so it takes time and effort, and it's along with other kinds of volunteer things that you do. It may not happen right away, yeah. but the feeling that you get when it's done is a nice reward. Mm. It makes you feel good. And I don't go around talking to people about what I'm doing as a volunteer necessarily. Well, it's unless in the middle I'm asked of the night. to speak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. She's got to show up at one in the morning. I mean, who it's knew? Important for the job is to show up. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, gee. So it's very interesting, and that's why I've stayed with it all this time. Yeah. How many years, would you guess, have you been volunteering? Well, I started when I was still at National Life, and I'm guessing probably a good 40 or 50 years I've been volunteering from day one when I was still working at National Life to where, I, where I'm at now. And I've grown and matured, and, and, and it's just natural for me. Like, like the Red Cross, we go and put in smoke detectors. Right people's houses. That's huge. Um, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. And people need it. And, and, and you meet 95-year-old people that are as spry as we are. Right. <laughs> you made an incredible case from volunteerism on this program already. Yes. <laughs> yes. And if anybody is interested, they can vol come and, and um, call United Way or go to their local church or anywhere. To be fire department? A lot of, yes. You go to the local fire to, department and say, yeah, I'd can, like to volunteer? You can because uh, they'll train you. Uh -huh. there's, a, there's a training that goes with that. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. yeah. We're near the end of their program, but is there anything you'd like to say before we, we end the program? I appreciate being able to be on the program and to talk about volunteerism and to encourage people to volunteer to help and it, you don't have to choose one thing or anything else they can guide you to um, whatever you want to do mm. so. so so anything else you'd like to say i'd just like to thank both of you for the Im immense amount of care that you've given to this community and i think that you know, if anybody wants to have a fulfilled life, they should follow in your footsteps. Yeah. And I appreciate your efforts. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Uh, is a pleasure. Is a pleasure. <laughs> That's right. Uh, what, you, uh, what you brought up uh, wanted, uh, is, a, is a re very reason that you were chosen. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yes, you're right. Definitely, I think. They're exceptional projects. And I don't know. See, you have to be, you have to be um, kind of uh, somebody has to nominate you. Mm. And I don't know who that was mm. today. Any final word before we close our program? I think We've said it about all, don't you? Anything you'd like to ask, answer or comment? Uh, it's just a huge honor and pleasure to be in your guys' company and <laughs> to get to hear of your adventures. Well, and it's a pleasure to I be here. I applaud you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. And I joined Sophie in, the, in her thoughts. And uh, again, thank you very much for being on the program. Oh. You're a credit to your community. Thank you very much. I appreciate your thoughts and comments. This is Bill, Bill Doyle and, and Sophie Kirsten. Uh, thank you for being on the program. You're quite welcome.